I myself have even used data from the AP-8 model to calculate the proton doses that the astronauts would have received. And of course, the AP-8 is based on averages of satellite proton flux data, data derived from over 20 satellites between the mid-1960s and early 1970s. I even used correction factors that were established from much later satellite observations. It is important to note that the Van Allen belts exist due to solar protons and electrons becoming trapped within the Earth's magnetic field. This field is generated by the rotation of the Earth's liquid ion outer core. And while you can't drill all the way down to this outer core, you can detect it with global seismology. Such seismic surveys have been established long before NASA existed. Thus, the existence and mere discovery of the Van Allen belt is only consistent with the Earth being a sphere and space travel being possible. Despite this, some flat earthers and space travel deniers have been stupid enough to cite the Van Allen belt as evidence for their nonsense. I've even seen some of these ill-informed people mirror some of my videos on the Van Allen belt, with flat earth erroneously added to the title or description. Only a complete idiot would cite the Van Allen belts as evidence for anything and then turn around and say that the earth is flat and that all space travel is fate. When this is pointed out, flat earthers are quick to backpedal or hand wave. Some deny that the belts exist, despite previously citing them as evidence. And others even go so far as to claim that the Van Allen belt is actually the firmament covering their flat earth, whatever that means. This in itself demonstrates that they can't even keep their stories straight, or even produce a working and consistent model of their fantasy world. These people claim that the Earth is a flat disk with Antarctica acting as an ice ring around the outer edge, and that the Sun and Moon are somehow hovering some 3,000 miles above in a circle, with the night sky contained within a gigantic rotating dome encapsulating the Earth, the so-called firmament. If the Van Allen belt was actually the firmament, as flat earthers have backpedaled, why would it be an obstacle in trying to reach the Moon? Why would it be a barrier to something that's below it? Hell. The real inner Van Allen belt actually begins at only 1,000 kilometers and extends to some 7,000 kilometers. If it's really the firmament, this places the alleged altitudes of the sun and moon within it. How then could the sun and moon fly above their flat earth in a circle? You can't have it both ways. Now true, flat earthers may argue that it's the dome rotating the sun and the moon, but if they are embedded in the firmament, how could the sun get behind the moon during eclipses? or consider equinoxes and solstices. During the spring equinox, the noon sun will appear directly overhead an observer on the equator, while during the summer and winter solstices, it will appear directly overhead observers in the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. This means on the flat earth, the sun must be moving back and forth between these latitudes. How then could the sun possibly do so if it were embedded in the impenetrable dome? It can't, that's physically impossible. This scenario doesn't even withstand Tycho Brahe levels of scrutiny.